Number one on this list is that there is no one right way to eat healthily. And what feels healthy and nourishing to one person might be triggering or feel wrong to another. And I wanna take my father-in-law, for example, because that man is a machine. He's 83 years old, he's in great health, very active, very sharp and he has a daily routine that he always sticks to and one of the things that he does is intermittent fasting my father-in-law eats the same thing for breakfast each day which is a hard-boiled egg some days it's a slice of bread some days it's a potato but it's usually one or the other and also a banana and then he has a normal lunch and skips dinner wash rinse and repeat every day and he's been doing that for years and for my father-in-law this eating routine is something that he enjoys and it keeps him feeling satisfied and healthy and fit but as for me someone who is a recovered binge eater this kind of routine would just not facilitate healthy eating for me which actually brings us to healthy eating habit number two but before we dive into that welcome back to my channel my name is marissa and i'm a minimalist mom and this week i am talking about the healthy eating habits that helped me cure my binge eating disorder. I was on the fence about whether or not I should share more details about my actual binge eating disorder, and I decided to keep this video solely focused on my healthy eating tips. And if you want to hear my binge eating recovery story or why I started binge eating in the first place, make sure to like this video and go down and drop me a comment in the comment section below that says, tell me your story. And if this video can hit 10,000 likes in the next three months, then I'll take that as a sign that this is a video that you guys would be interested in. And today I'm sharing with you 11 habits that help me feel healthy, satisfied, and comfortable in my own skin. And I do want to point out that I am not a doctor, I am not a dietitian. I'm sharing this video as someone who has been diagnosed and who struggled with binge eating for many years and who has received actual therapy on this topic as well as read tons of self-help books and in the end was able to figure out what worked best for me. So the way I'm gonna do this today is I'm gonna go in reverse order and the tips will get more and more helpful as we go along and I saved the number one thing that helped me with my binge eating disorder until the very, very end. With that being said, let's dive into tip number two. Tip number two is to never skip meals. So I mentioned before about my father-in-law and how he does intermittent fasting and intermittent fasting seems to have gotten really popular recently and I've seen a lot of people that I know doing it and other YouTubers doing it and for them it works really well. But for someone like me who has a past with disordered eating, it's a trigger for me because the moment I feel like I'm starting to restrict my eating, that sets off like this internal panic mode and then that's going to be more likely to make me binge when I finally do eat food so for me I've found that it's really important that I don't skip meals and I pay attention to my hunger cues and when I feel like I'm hungry to go ahead and eat something before I get to the point where it's just excessive hunger and then that would be more likely to make me binge eat healthy eating habit number three is there is no such thing as bad food of course if you eat anything in excess like too much chocolate too much pizza, too many eggs. Anything is bad for you in excess. Allowing myself to have the food that I crave in moderation is really a healthy habit and has helped me prevent a lot of binge eating. So if I wanna have a slice of cake, I will have a slice of cake, but that doesn't mean I need to eat the whole cake. Are there foods that still trigger me? Of course there are. And I have to be more careful when I'm eating these foods and practice some of the other healthy eating habits, but I do not put any type of food out of boundaries when it comes to eating. Healthy eating habit number four is to slow down. And if you're someone who is a binge eater like I was, or if you just struggle with overeating, you know when you start to get to that point where you start eating the bad food, you feel like it's something that you shouldn't be eating and you just wanna shovel it as fast as you can in your mouth and really being able to slow down and eat mindfully chew your food and focusing on noticing the feelings, the flavor, it's really important for someone like me. It's really interesting because I went to school for speech language pathology and I'm actually a swallowing expert. So my specialty was helping people who have had like stroke or who have Parkinson's, who have trouble with their swallowing, relearn how to eat and drink. When I combine this knowledge of what I know about the swallowing mechanism with what I know about mindful eating, putting these things together really helped me slow down my eating, take my time and be more mindful, which is less likely to trigger me to set off into a binge. Healthy eating habit number five is to drink more water. 
This is actually kind of a joke in our family because my husband calls me a desert rat because I never feel thirsty. I always wonder if it's like my thirst awareness has broken and then I just interpret thirst cues as hunger cues because I feel hungry a lot, but I rarely ever feel thirsty. And so for me, drinking more water throughout the day and making sure that my body is hydrated has been very important. I'm less likely to misinterpret what's probably thirst cues and not just water, but also drinking warm beverages. Like I found that when I met my husband, I started drinking a lot more tea. Sometimes I find that a hot cup of tea is so much more satisfying than just a glass of water because it has a little bit of flavor and really it helps me be less hungry throughout the day. Healthy eating habit number six is to reduce portion size. I have found that the more that I put on my plate, the more I feel compelled to try to finish that quantity. And I know that there are some people who will take like a salad plate versus a large plate to make sure that they start with a smaller portion size. I don't personally do that because I've gotten so used to reducing my portion size, but what I will do is I will give myself a smaller portion size to start with. And then if I feel like I still want more food after that, then I'm free to go back and get more. And it helps with healthy eating tip number seven, which is that your body is not a trash can. So I used to feel really guilty about if I didn't finish everything on my plate. And I think that this is from the things that I was taught by my father, where he's like, you have to finish it, otherwise you're wasting it, you're wasting money. And you get out of touch with your body's natural satisfaction, satis satis Faction signals and you start just feeling like oh i don't want to waste that so i need to finish it all when in reality it's much better for you to not dump that excess into your body and instead if you start with the smaller portion then you're more likely to have these clean leftovers that you can save to make meals later and that's something that i teach my kids too is that we start with smaller portion sizes and we can always get more. And that not only prevents you from eating food in excess, but it's also good for reducing food waste, which in turn saves you money. I saw a recent study that said that up to 30% of food is wasted in a household. And if you think about it, if you spent $600 a month on groceries and you are wasting 30% of that, that's $180 a month, $180 a month. That's 2,160 per year that's just being thrown away. So if you reduce your portion sizes in the first place, that's less likely to happen. Healthy eating habit number eight is to consider caloric density. Now this is something that I learned about when I read a book called The Okinawa Diet. I did find it fascinating because what they did is they looked at the diet and exercise patterns of the Okinawan people who are one of the healthiest and longest lived people in the entire world, they're more likely to live past 100. So for me, who had not really heard this concept before of like, looking at the volume of things and comparing it to the calories that are in these, that was really helpful for me. And I started thinking of ways that I could incorporate higher volume, lower calorie density foods into my meals to make them more satisfying. So for example, like when I make meatballs, I will add zucchini and carrots and kale and all sorts of vegetables into the meatballs. That way they're more voluminous but I'm not adding as many calories. Healthy eating habit number nine is meal planning. Meal planning helps me know what I'm going to cook, make sure that I have the ingredients for the meals that I want to make in the kitchen. And it not only helps me save money, but it helps me make sure that I plan more balanced and healthy foods into my diet. And I'll also make sure to plan fun meals or eating out into our meal plan as well. We typically eat out either once a week or every two weeks. And that is a fun little treat to look forward to where we kind of splurge and have something yummy. And then also on the weekends is usually when I will make something fun like waffles. We just got a new waffle iron and the boys were so excited for me to make waffles again. Adding in treats every once in a while is a lot easier when you're meal planning, then you know when you can look forward to and anticipate that. And as someone whose binge eating was also related to like anxiety and feeling too stressed out and overwhelmed, a meal plan helps me know what I'm expecting and plan ahead so that I'm less likely to feel overwhelmed when it's 
time to make meals because I already know what I'm going to be cooking. It's just one of these things that like really simplifies life so much. And by the way, you can also check out the meal planner that I use, which is available in my store. I will make sure to link it down in the description box and the comment section below for you if you want to check it out. It's part of my minimalist budget binder system. Healthy eating habit number 10 on this list is facilitating versus obstructing. So basically what this means is you want to facilitate the healthy eating habits and you want to set up barriers and obstructions that prevent you from falling into the health, unhealthy eating patterns. So what this might look like is not having these trigger foods in your home. Now I have been recovered for long enough that I am now able to have things that would be trigger foods for me, like ice cream or potato chips in the home. But if you're not at the point where I am yet, just don't buy these things and have them in your home because when you find yourself craving these things, then there's this extra step where you would have to go to the store and go buy them. Especially as a mom, I'm not able to like leave the house at night to just go out and buy junk food. So that is a huge barrier that I have put up for myself by not owning those unhealthy foods that will prevent me from when I do feel like binging, being able to access those things and instead having healthy snacks and alternatives. I found it's very satisfying to have like a banana with some crunchy peanut butter on top or even celery with crunchy peanut butter on top. One of the things that we've done in our house is to have a fruit bowl out. And so eating fruit as a snack becomes quicker and easier. I see it there, it's visual, it reminds me that when I'm hungry, I can just reach for an apple or a banana. So find ways to set up barriers that are going to prevent you from having easy access to the bingey foods and make healthy eating a lot easier. And finally, healthy eating habit number 11 is habit tracking. So annoying to do, but it works. I can't remember if I learned this from my therapist or in the book, Overcoming Binge Eating, but basically what you do is you have a notebook that is just your binge eating notebook. So on the left hand side, you'll write the time and then you'll also have columns where it says location. What emotions are you feeling? How bad was the binge on a scale of one to 10? What did you do to intervene with the binge? And then were you able to stop it? Yes or no. So every time you feel a binge coming on or you have a binge, go into your journal and start writing these things down. And that's gonna help you really notice and think about what kind of emotions you're feeling that are likely to trigger a binge. Are there any common places that you're more likely to binge at? Are there any people that are likely to trigger a binge? So being able to recognize these patterns that are leading you to start binge eating is really important to helping you figure out ways to mitigate and stop it. I hope you enjoyed this video of my top favorite healthy eating habits that have helped me recover from binge eating disorder. If you did, please make sure to like this video and maybe consider going down and hitting the little red subscribe button to subscribe to our channel and join our minimalist family where we are passionate about helping you conquer your clutter and simplify your way to a happier and better life. And if you're looking for more information on mental health and how it relates to minimalism and simplifying your life, make sure to go check out one of these videos. And until next week, I'll see you then. Take care. Bye-bye.